this uh, title of my today's talk is acute kidney injury uh, developing the electronic patient record in india is it possible let's hear from patient daughter patient testimonial so what is it good afternoon uh, my name is dipika and daughter of mr ramesh khanna age uh, 79 and um, we came here almost uh, 25 days back and uh, 26th uh, day before, I was just having, I stay in Dalhousie in Himachal Pradesh. So 26th day before, I was having a conversation with my father and he said that I you walk very less and I walk almost 7 kilometers a day. And on the 25th day, uh, I got a call from my caretaker that something is wrong and he's not well, there's a lot of fever. I rushed down from uh, Dalhousie to Mumbai. And we brought him to Kokila then. And here uh, he was diagnosed of acute kidney injury because of an abscess in the liver. Now, um, he has always been a very, very fit person. And uh, he's been really taking good care of his health, drinking a lot of water, hydrating himself. I never thought that this can ever happen to him. Now, what I was told was that, you know, since uh, there's an e-alert uh, system and they kept on monitoring his keratin, as a result of this, they controlled it in time and they did not let this acute injury turn out to be a chronic one. Had it been a chronic one, then recovery would have been very, very difficult, very painful and time-consuming. So I'm very thankful to the team of Kukla Ben for diagnosing it with their e-alert system. So as uh, we know, all know the public health perspective of acute kidney injury, it is defined as abrupt decrease or sudden deterioration in kidney function, which results in the accumulation of metabolic waste products as well as dysregulation of volume status, electrolyte and acid base balance. This condition is very common, estimated to occur 5% to 20% of all hospitalized patients. And it carries significant risk of mortality, around 20% in some studies. But uh, the scenario in India and the developing world is quite different. And um, if you see around 13.3 million cases every year globally and uh, 1.7 million deaths per year, Amongst them, estimated 11.3 million cases per year in developing countries and 1.4 million deaths per year in low or middle income countries. Because of this situation, electronic health record or electronic patient record or e-alerts can modify patient outcomes, contribute to greater resource utilization and decrease healthcare cost and financial burden. Let's see how. Coming to lab perspective, the ability to implement real-time AKI interventions such as alerts and best practice advisories has emerged as a promising tool to fight against the harmful sequelae of AKI, which include short-term adverse outcomes, as well as progression to chronic kidney disease, dialysis, and death. So we all know about different consensus Rifle, Akin, and uh, AKIN, and KDIGO, kidney disease uh, improving global outcomes. Guidelines advise identification of AKI based on increase in creatinine. But the small changes of serum level of creatinine are not detected by clinicians sometimes, so early intervention unlikely, or also urine output monitoring. Sometimes these are not done in all set up so therefore uh, the detection uh, sometimes missed and uh, this further increases the burden of disease there are consensus statement by expert uh, re who recommend that um, early personalized investigations and monitoring and management of aki the impact of AKIE alert, like in this study, they said 0.8% uh, reduction of mortality, length of stay decreased 0.3 days reduction, and dialysis use 2.7% reduction. So these are different causes of acute kidney injury, all of us know pre-renal causes, sepsis, then hypovolemia, 
diarrhea, vomiting, hemorrhages, and intraneural syndrome, cardiac failure, hypertension, intrinsic AKI, acutibular injury due to crash injury, rhabdomyolysis, NSAID usage, gentamicin, and different other nephrotoxin usage, tubular interstitial injury, glomerular nephritis, uh, then myeloma, vasculitis, reverse nephritis, anti associated vasculitis. Coming to the picture in India, sepsis causes around 56% of AKI, then snake bite, diarrhea, acute gastroenteritis, cirrhosis, congestive heart failure, malaria, dengue, then ARDS, and COVID-19, we know this is one of the major causes nowadays, then sickle cell disease, obstructive uropathy, dengue, um, acute pancreatitis, crap typhus, hemolytic uremic syndrome, help, uh, bee sting, eclampsia. So the scenario or causes of AKI in India is uh, different. So some examples of AKI warning system, like NHS England implemented that in March 2015, and that all the lab system, biochemistry department lab system, or LIS issue AKI warning uh, based on raise uh, in serum creatinine level. And uh, they have said different type of e others, AKI care bundle or AKI outreach teams uh, help uh, the clinicians to identify the patients with AKI. So e-alert system or electronic alerts are key interventions in patients with AKI to improve management of patients. It's important for early diagnosis of AKI via e-alerts to improve the diagnosis of AKI. Studies show shows that uh, ELRs can affect the behavior of the clinicians, reduce the use of nephrotoxic drug, and improve the prognosis of AKI. An automated screening process that reports AKI has been implemented throughout the NHS in England is driven an algorithm-based um, AKI ELRs like depicted in NG148 or CG169 guidelines uh, developed by NICE. So e-alert, the efficacy uh, is dependent on multiple interrelated factors as schematized uh, in the conceptual model I'll describe later. The alerts are least effective when provider is already aware about the clinical situation. This is called uh, endogenous recognitions or when the alert is not actionable, they can't stop the nephrotoxic drug or there are no therapies, alternative therapies available. Now, conversely, alert may be most effective when providers are unaware of AKI in situations where creatinine is rising slowly or when actionable steps are immediately available. So several studies shown the potential efficacy of the alert system in the hospital setting. The factors for e-alert success include speed of information system, timing of the alert real time and stat timing, minimal disruption of an integration into the provider workflow. The simplicity and clarity of the message and provision of references and sufficient information within the alert. So if we see this is a conceptual model, AKI e alert, the favoring factors are lack of recognitions of AKI because this is heterogeneous causes and heterogeneous settings where it is detected and limited experience with drug dosing of nephrotoxins and likelihood of progressions and the discouraging factors like endogenous recognitions which may lead to alert fatigue and lack of alternative therapies. So if we see the uh, effectiveness versus intrusiveness of e-alert, uh, alert effectiveness strongly related to the degree with which it intrudes on the usual process of care and uh, creating a conflict in terms of clinical outcomes. So there are different types of alerts, passive alerts, then electronic health alerts, no acknowledgement required, or EA alert where mandatory and acknowledgement required. Uh, these are kind of soft stop alert and the hard stop alert where clinician has to take action based on EA alerts. So uh, the potential benefits are reduction of medication errors, early identifications, uh, and appropriate treatment of under-recognized conditions, enhanced quality of care, then improved patient safety and outcomes, and the potential harms of electronic medical 
uh, record alert system, risk of development of alert fatigue amongst the clinicians due to poor clarity, low specificity, low sensitivity, high frequency disruption of the workflow leading to decreased attention to the clinically important alerts. Increasing attention to non-alerted patients due to increased reliance on the alert system or unintended adverse consequences when alerting overrides the physician's judgment. Therefore, limitations are potential for false positive alerts, which may undermine alerting and induce provider adherence. And alert criteria may serve as poor proxies for true disease probations like EGF or in kidney disease. Difficulty of uh, direct integration of alerts into the electronic health record system and possible lack of generalizations of alerts to different care settings with varied practices and patients' populations. So we all know uh, the KDI geo uh, guidelines and API definitions increase in serum creatinine by more than equal to 0.3 milligram per deciliter within 24 hours or increase in serum creatinine more than equal to 1.5 times from the previous measurements, which is known or presumed to have occurred within the prior seven days or urine volume less than 0.5 ml per kg per hour for six hours. And these are different stages like stage one, two, three, based on serum creatinine value and based on urine output. So for us diagnosticians, every blood sample tells us a story. Let's see how. So I'll, this when we plan to implement AKIE alert, so this is the business model canvas. Um, I was doing the transformational leadership program under IIM in those. So this business model developed by me and our research intern Ujja Parik. So this is like we define the key partners who are the key stakeholders, um, physicians, nephrologists, intensivist, emergency room physician, nurses, then IT team, the key stakeholders, key activities, then motivation for the partnership, value proposition, how we are going to implement that, the customer relationship, what will be the patient outcomes, then customer segments, we have chosen the adult population for pre-implementation stage, then key resources, then channels, then cost structures, how it will affect the financial burden of the patient and revenue streams, how it will, it will impact on the hospital revenue. So then we have taken the period of 20 days and inclusion all patients more than equal to 18 years. Uh, then exclusion criteria are uh, like initiation of dialysis, patient on dialysis, and in stage renal disease uh, diagnosis code or in, on admission value more than equal to four milligram per deciliter or patients within six months of kidney transplant. So we have excluded uh, with the previous history of this and criteria for triggering e alert for our case was 1.5 time rise in serum creatinine from the lowest creatinine value within the seven days period and more than equal to 0.3 milligram per deciliter in serum creatinine rise from the most rich creatinine value in the last 48 hours. So this is like a display in uh, the clinician's uh, screen. Patient safety advisory AKI alert. Please rule out the possibility of acute kidney injury. So relevant creatinine values over the last seven days, most recent, lowest in seven days and highest. And the uh, second criteria are relevant creatinine values over the last 48 hours are listed below most recent, lowest and highest. So exclusion criteria also we mentioned, and also there are um, option for agreement and disagreement and clinician will, can write and explain the reason for disagreement, if any. So this is our critical call log where we uh, telephonically inform the clinicians about AKIE alerts. So this is due to difference in 1.24 milligram per deciliter in 48 hours. We write the reason and uh, this is AKIE alert due to 1.5 time rise in uh, 
creatine in value in 7 days. So this is telephonic alert informed to the nurses and clinicians. Then alert firing protocol algorithm will be integrated with the formula described in the previous slide in patient database software. And e alert will be triggered when serum creatine level rise as per the criteria described previously within an hour of detection. So it will be informed to the physician, nurses, and lab professional. And uh, there can be uh, telephonic uh, informations or communications, email or text-based alert. And um, this study outcome variables age, gender, total number of patient evaluated, patient diagnosed with AKI with a alert system, total number of AKI documented, then stage and progression of AKI, length of patient stay, mortality in hospitals. So this is our flow chart where this is serum creatinine value, and if it is more than equal to three milligram per deciliter in 48 hours, then e alert raised, and uh, also we uh, monitor it in seven days if. Uh, we find the most recent creatinine value that is C1 and establish the baseline value of lowest, lowest serum creatinine in the last seven days that is RV. So, this uh, C1 RV uh, divided by RV, if the ratio is more than equal to 1.5, uh, then the alert is raised and we define the stage. Stage one is uh, if the ratio is more than equal to 1.5 to 2. Stage two is uh, more than equal to 2 to 3. And stage three is when the ratio is more than equal to 3. So uh, this is our study around total patients of 2,708. And uh, we excluded the pediatric patients. The inclusion is around 4,439. And alert was raised in 273 patients and true AKI e was 239 and this was around 5.38 percent in the hospital setting ward ICU and OPD and false AKI e alert was 34 and non AKI was 4200 so this is the included patients and this is graphical representation this is true AKI e alert and this is the box plot where we can see the range. Range is starting from 1.3 to Is there some problem? one and stage two and stage three so this is the box plot for that and uh, we have done the clinical validation of our data for that we have taken 2000 subjects so uh, included patients was 1799 and we have seen number of akie alert in raised in 2000 patient was 143 that was 7.9% uh, in the hospital setting. And number of patients with documented AKI diagnosis by clinicians in the um, report uh, or the clinical system. Uh, so that was around 46. So this is the graphical representation of that. So coming to, we are in search of uh, troponin for AKI or earliest biomarkers. So there are novel biomarkers, including neutrophil gelatinous associated lipocalin, NGL, kidney, um, injury molecule, KIM-1, interleukin-8, liver type, fatty acid binding protein, insulin-like growth factor binding protein-7, and tissue inhibitor of metalloproteinase uh, TIMP2. So we all know that decreased bromelular filtration we see by serum creatinine and serum cystatin and urinary markers of AKI for predicting tubular stress or injury like KIM and interleukin 18 and NGAL, LFABP and uh, IGFBP7 and TIMP2. So few studies indicated that if these urinary markers of AKI are earlier reflections of renal damage than the conventional serum markers why? Why we need that? Uh, because typically serum creatinine will take 24 to 36 hours to rise after a renal onslaught, so delayed marker. 
uh, because more than 50% of renal function loss for increase in creatinine. Therefore, this markers like KIM-1 or IL-18, this uh, they detected early, like KIM-1 uh, detected earlier in 12 to 24 hours and IL-18 as early as six hours and NGEL and FABP uh, peak at six hours. So despite that earlier detectable presence of this marker in urine, but uh, it's remain unclear if the serial sampling is necessary like troponin in acute myocardial infarction. So the standardization of this biomarker is required and also like uh, this is unclear how to implement that and how to use those earlier biomarkers so now coming to electronic health record we get the data and then it combines text and numeric data from average data sources we apply the rules based on subject matter exposed different algorithm shown and it delivers high quality care with patient-centric insights, reduce variability through consistent guideline driven recommendation, improve workflow and efficiency, it improves revenue such as patient-specific next step, uh, test and discharge advice, improve quality, standardized treatment protocol as per local and international guidelines, repository of guideline-based recommendations available across multiple key stakeholders, and it improves patient um, satisfaction, provide patient specific interpretation and next steps, improve standardized care by flagging patients, apply risk algorithms, and provide better interpretation and decrease length of stay um, and economic burden. So if this electronic health record by creatinine based model, this has multiple implications and it can uh, be used in a bigger setup like national level, set up so we identify the management and then expand and transform in at national level so this is our future plan we have taken the baby steps and uh, but uh, there are miles to go like robust first aid uh, so machine learning based model or deep embedding model uh, for diagnosis prognosis and therapeutic interventions of acute kidney injury and we can use the lis and his tracking of serum creatinine in real time based and um, identify features associated with aki using the machine learning or deep embedding or deep model so the features may be demographic data clinical findings, etiology, ICU status, clinical biomarkers, and uh, functional status score and previous usages of nephrotoxic drug or nephrotoxic drug if it is used. And uh, we can compare that with the different earlier biomarkers uh, like GIMP2, IGF, BP7 and NGAL, FABP or IL-18 and there we split the data. One is the train set and one is a control set or test set and we see the conceptual model with the implementation and the outcomes of mortality, complications, patient readmission rate, nephrotoxic dose reduction and prediction for need of uh, dialysis or renal replacement therapy. And ultimately with based on these two models, uh, train set and test set, we calculate area under the curve and sensitivity and specificity of e alert system. So we have taken uh, the baby steps. We begin our journey to transform healthcare. Future is implement that at the national level and uh, based on AI or artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep embedding, uh, based real-time prediction of acute kidney injury. It will improve healthcare outcomes, standardize interpretations and next steps, and improve quality and training and save clinicians time to refocus on better outcomes. So this is uh, my painting, clinicians, nephrologists, physicians, you are healing, you are the healer. But if you see this extended hand, that is ours. We diagnose patients through this electronic health record or ELR based on creatinine. We are helping you to heal. Thank you. And this is acknowledgement slide. The study is done by this team. And I thank you, biochemistry team, nephrology team, IT team of our hospital for implementation of this. Thank you. Now, uh, can you see my slide? Yeah. 
Yes, we can see this slide of biomass. Okay. Okay. So now the second part of the talk is like uh, maybe two minutes more. So we realized uh, like how creatinine, the simple markers which we do in uh, like, you know, every uh, lab, uh, how it can be implemented with electronic health record. And we have seen like, you know, just implementing that ELR. <clears throat> We were not aware, like, you know, implementation will bring such a change because of that. I actually, uh, the most of the part, I covered this AKIE a lot because implementation has uh, a, a huge impact and patient outcome. And also we have realized like when around uh, uh, many, many patients were missed because there are little bit increase in creatinine value. It was sometimes ignored in the clinical settings because the heterogeneous presentation so this simple implementations can help in patient safety, patient impact, as well as patients, uh, uh, even pa uh, patients revenues and also the hospital revenues. So now, uh, what is the role of the biomarker? The, uh, two, three slides on that. Serum creatinine uh, is not an accurate biomarker we realize to diagnose AKI. There are several factors influence the level of creatinine in serum, including renal and non-renal influences. And delays also may occur in the rise of serum creatinine values and thus early diagnosis or, of AKI may not be possible if we only measure the serum creatinine, not like, you know, we calculate the um, uh, difference or uh, in 48 hours or seven days. So, uh, and also we know pre-renal esotemia, modest rise and uh, form and return to the baseline with improvement in the hemodynamic status. Then contrast nephropathy, serum creatinine rises within one to two days, peaks within three to five days and resolve within five to seven days. And etherothrom uh, embolic disease causing ischemic AKI subacute rises in serum creatinine with uh, rapid increase in severe AKI and nephrodoxin induced AKI delayed for four to five days to two weeks after initial exposure to epithelial cell toxins such as aminoglycosides and antibiotics and cisplatin. So we realize serum creatinine is not a very good marker to diagnosis of AKI. So because of that is our search or uh, to identify a novel biomarker but this fluctuating levels of serum creatinine not always correlating to significantly larger change occurring in GFR due to AKI. So thus serum creatinine is a not sensitive indicator for severity of injury and high interpretation variability. We all know like how it very, uh, <clears throat> very it is. So interestingly, sometimes even a larger loss in renal mass may occur reflected as a significant change in serum creatinine. So clearly serum creatinine levels, although easy to measure and track serially, not the most optimal biomarkers that can be used for AKI. Therefore, it, uh, the search, we need a new biomarker or novel biomarker like kidney injury molecule one or chem one. But why we can't like, you know, the standardization and harmonization of all those new biomarkers is a challenge because the expression of chem one uh, that is poorly expressed in proximal tubular cells in normal condition, it is upregulated due to any significant tissue injury that may be caused by ischemia or nephrotoxic drugs. So this protein may then be found in abundance in urine of patients and be evaluated non-invasively. And similarly, NGAL. NGAL is now nowadays available in many platforms like immunoassay platforms, ELISAs. And so it's highly expressed post AKI and APLs in the plasma and urine within two hours of the injury onset or maximum six hours, we can see uh, like, you know, NGAL is present. So this is one of the earliest biomarkers. And expression of this gene is upregulated in kidney proximal tubule cells following ischemic or cisplatin induced renal injury. So it is analogous to troponin I of myocardial infarction. It is an early biomarker for acute kidney injury and also elevated post cardiopulmonary bypass, which is one of the major cause of AKI, sepsis and pyuria. And coming to cystatin C and also alpha-1 microglobulin, good prognostic biomarker with high levels in urine indicating poor outcome. But again, it can be used as a biomarker of AKI. So other potential biomarkers like alkaline amino peptides, alkaline phosphatase, 
alpha glutathionase transferase gamma glutamyl transpeptidase n acetyl beta glucosaminidase beta 2 microglobulin retinol blinding binding protein microalbumin clustering interleukin 18 cysteine reach protein osteopontin l fatty acid binding protein sodium hydrogen exchanger isoforms and exosomal futin a these are several others biomarkers studied in preclinical models not many of them are not studied in the clinical models and uh, so now coming to uh, the few biomarkers which are existent and which are uh, like you know studied in different setups uh, and uh, so like cystatin C, we know that important extracellular inhibitor of cysteine protease. It's filtered by the glomerulus and reabsorbed by the proximal tubular cells. It's elevated uh, cystatin C, we used to do serum cystatin C. So now urine cystatin C also is elevated in reflect tubular dysfunction. High levels may predict poorer outcome. But again, uh, because it's now ELISA and nephilometry and other platforms, it's available. But urine cystatin C harmonization and standardization again is, is a challenge. Microglobulin we are using since long for established biomarker, established marker for monitoring progression of chronic kidney disease. Elevated urinary levels may indicate indicative of proximal tubular damage, but this lacks specificity of API and may limit its utility. Now, KIM-1, this is the type 1 cell membrane glycoprotein upregulated in the differentiated proximal tubular epithelial cell. This ectodomain is shared and can be quantitated in urine following AKI in preclinical and clinical studies. So elevated urinary KIM-1 levels are highly sensitive and specific for AKI. So this is because the upregulation following various models of preclinical and clinical AKI, fibrosis, renal cell carcinoma, and polycystic kidney disease. But again, uh, this is available in ELISA and Luminex-based essay, but it is not, uh, this is research-based kit uh, in India. So this is not many uh, times studied in the clinical settings. Now coming to NGAL. NGAL is initially identified bound to gelatinase in specific granules of the neutrophils, but also may be induced in epithelial cells in the settings of inflammations or malignancy and expression upregulated in kidney proximal tubule cells and urine following ischemic or cisplatin or nephrotoxin induced renal injury, found to be an earlier indicator of AKI following cardiopulmonary bypass. And specificity for AKI setting for sepsis and pyuria, which may be one of the uh, important cause, need to be further established. So it's not validated in clinical setting for sepsis and pyuria related AKI. So coming to interleukin 18, and this is cytokines with broad immunomodulatory properties, particularly settings of ischemic injury. So it's consecutively expressed in distal tubules and strong immunoreactivity in proximal tubules with transplant rejection. So elevated urinary levels found to be early markers of AKI, an independent predictor of mortality in critically ill patients. And liver uh, fatty acid binding port protein, this again is available. And also this uh, is a potential biomarker. So this is my final slide. So this is like, you know, increased risk of kidney injury, uh, early detection biomarkers like NGAL, cystatin C, serum, urine NGAL, IL-18, KIM-1, and GST and LFABP, then kidney damage diagnostic biomarkers like serum, NGAL, cystatin C, urine NGAL, KIM-1. And um, then when there is a decreased GFR diagnostic biomarkers like serum, creatinine, urea, and cystatin C. And prognostic biomarkers of kidney failures like serum, NGAL, cystatin C, creatinine, urea, IL-6, CRP, urine, NGAL, and KIM-1. So this is, I have already said like this are, this have, uh, we are in search of troponin I of acute kidney injury as uh, myocardial infarctions like troponin I and troponin T, how important that is. But we are uh, standardization and harmonizations of these biomarkers are really challenged. Uh, and uh, also we are not aware, do you need serial monitoring like delta troponin I? Do we need serial monitoring of those biomarkers for acute kidney injury or, 
or not. So this needs to be established. So this is again in COVID patient, we know how important is the role of acute kidney injury. This was one case where we have like uh, initially it was not detected, but by this AKIE alert, it was implemented. So this patient was stage one AKI. So then they stopped the, uh, they decreased the nephrotoxic drug usage and it was beneficial for her. She was unconscious. So in conclusion, so of course, diagnosis of AKI is a really challenge based on only creatinine. But if we uh, like following the KDIGO guidelines, if we implement AKIE alert or electronic health record, so because this AKI is heterogeneous, it has a huge impact in the um, severity, presentation, etiology, and timing of the acute insult. And so because of that, it has a huge impact in patient safety and also the cost reduction and also revenue uh, in, has majorly impacted by AKIE alert or electronic health record. And the future of AKI diagnosis may rely on no novel predictive markers that anticipate and prevent AKI to enable optimal management as dictated by proven clinical outcomes. So we are in search of novel biomarkers for AKI. Thank you.